And we're back with another big one. In this video, we'll be taking a look at fighters who know a thing or two about combat. Sure, it's easy to think you're good at fighting, but to know you're good at fighting takes a lot of hard work, training, blood, sweat, tears, all the good stuff. Now, let's take the martial arts out of the cage or the gym and put them in the streets to beat the delusion out of some people. Here are street fighters destroying fake fighters. Here we've got some backyard MMA action. It seems that the one guy has trained and the other has only watched MMA. Once the guy in the green trunks eats a body kick, he realizes there's more to fighting than cracking open a beer and streaming a UFC pay-per-view. The dude in the green shorts shoots for a desperation takedown. We all had 20-20 vision at this moment because everyone saw this takedown coming from a mile away. Turns out the body kick from earlier had the guy thinking he was a D1 wrestler all of a sudden. Once on the ground, this guy ate punches like it was an MMA glove buffet. Really, this could have been stopped sooner. This guy didn't have the skill or the desire to go any further, but he's tough and had the bravery to try and fight while I'm over here typing in the safety of my room. How would you rate the skills of the guy who won on a scale of 1 to 10? Let us know down below. Also, a shout out to Ibra TV for this footage. Be sure to check out that channel for more content like this. Usually when people dress like this dude in the red with the kimono and the bandana, we laugh about it. Heck, we usually laugh about a lot of things we see on street beefs. This one was no joke though. If we're going off appearance, not one of the people in this video looks like a fighter. However, once the dude playing the ref said to fight and got out of the way, we saw the unexpected. This kick came out of nowhere. Nobody saw it coming. But most importantly, the dude he was fighting didn't see it coming. This kick, off the lead leg, mind you, was pretty much perfect. The recipient went down, the fight was stopped, and the coolest moment in Street Beef's history was created. Be sure to check out the Street Beef's channel for more content like this. Shout out to King of the Streets for this fight. They got a lot of bangers on YouTube, be sure to check them out. A huge difference between an actual martial artist and a street fighter is spotted when the fight hits the ground. Much like speaking a second language, jiu-jitsu makes no sense at first, but once you understand it, you can see exactly what's happening and what people are going for. The fighter in the red shorts shoots a takedown from pretty far out, which isn't ideal, but he secures it by creating an angle and driving forward from a different direction, which is a pretty smart move. From there, it was clear who knows about grappling and who doesn't. The guy in the red shorts got to mount and then ground and pounded his opponent until the referee had seen enough. All right, make like this guy and hit that like button. Maybe hit the subscribe button too. <laughs> okay, so this one is actually pretty high level on both ends. This is what people who want their backyard organizations to look like. Ibra TV hit this matchmaking out of the park. These guys are both measured and the technique is on point. But this is another bout ended due to injury. There's a lot of technique to throwing things. The mechanics of the human body needs to be in mind when throwing stuff in a fight. And even then, it's a fight and the body's prone to injury. That's the point after all. This seems to be another ACL or MCL injury. We're unsure how it happened, but it's really an unfortunate end to what was an absolute banger of a backyard matchup. <laughs> This is another one that wasn't looking too bad on the feet, but that's only one aspect of fighting. To be a fighter, you need to be well-rounded and know a little bit about a lot. Once this fight hit the ground, it was very one-sided. In fact, neither guy looked particularly great on the ground, but one of them just had a bit more knowledge than the other, who appeared to have no jiu-jitsu skills at all. The guy in the Adidas pants got into side control and began fishing for a submission called the Americana. This hurts, but is really easy to avoid. However, the guy on the bottom didn't have the wherewithal to defend, and for that, he had a lot of arm discomfort until the referee stopped the action. <laughs> you know that feeling when you're in the passenger seat of a car that your friend who barely passed the driving test is operating? You start pressing non-existent brakes for them. That's the feeling we get here when we see the shorter guy dip really hard to his left. Our bodies instinctively 
want to throw a kick for the guy he's fighting. Better late than never, though. After he sees his opponent dip down, the dude in the black shorts throws a head kick and catches his opponent right on the chin. He connected with his foot, though, which isn't super effective. But, you know, getting kicked in the head, be it shin or toes, that's going to hurt no matter what. Either way, good on this guy for spotting that kick. After seeing his opponent's natural reaction is to dip to the side, that's some higher IQ fighting skill. When thick and quick are the two adjectives used to describe you, you're either a box of instant mashed potatoes or this girl fighting for street beefs. Here we'll look at the latter, but we're always down to talk mashed potatoes. This chick has some legit kickboxing chops. Like, her opponent's pretty good, and she's still getting demolished. That shows that the cliché saying is true. There are levels to fighting. Shout out to Street Beef Scrapyard for the footage. Let's go! Whoa. 30 seconds! Having an educated lead hand is the best thing when striking. Having a solid jab and a solid check hook is more than enough to win a striking battle against someone who doesn't really know how to answer these things. And as we can see here, the girl in the blue top straight up doesn't want to strike. When you got someone wading in and just trying to grab at your hands, you got someone who hates getting punched in the face. Being scared of getting hit will instantly negate any boxing skill. Hitting pads is way different than sparring. The girl in blue is getting chewed up by her opponent's jab and lead hook. Finally, she goes down. She's got heart, but her skill level just wasn't there. Okay, so I'm gonna use this clip to geek out on some do's and don'ts with jujitsu. Early on, the guy in the pants shoots for a takedown and gets it. What he does next is pretty genius, especially when taking on a street fighter. The guy who got taken down locks in an arm and guillotine, and as we can see, he's really straining himself to finish it. He has one leg over the back, but his other leg is in between his opponents, putting him in half guard. The guillotine can still happen from there, but the angle is off. Regardless, he's putting all his energy into this. Not smart. The dude stuck in the guillotine isn't in a rush to get out, nor should he be. The longer this guy is straining himself on the choke that isn't there, the more screwed he is once he loses the grip on the neck. Slowly but surely, the guy on top is transitioning to better positions, eventually ending up in mount where he's easily able to pop his head free and rain down shots on his now exhausted opponent. Since we pretty much gave you this free lesson in grappling, might as well subscribe. It really helps the channel and we really do appreciate the support. All right, back to the action. <laughs> then opposite of the last clip is when people can attack a guillotine, not get it, and still not gas himself out. Early into the fight, both guys are explosive and the pace is set. Some people believe that you should never set a pace you can't keep. While there are exceptions, it is mostly true. Well, the dude in the black gloves had a much better gas tank than the street fighter who gave it his all and was out of stamina, which was rather quick. His opponent got to the mount position, pinned his legs on his arms, which is more of a big brother move than MMA, and got to throw in his hands. That's all she wrote. <laughs> For those who've never been hit with a liver kick, you have no idea the pain you're missing out on. It's easily in my top five list of things I don't like. Caramelized onions, body kicks, regular onions, body punches, and eating onions while getting hit in the liver. That's my list of top five things I don't like. This guy got hit with a liver kick and started backpedaling immediately. Playing it off like you're not in pain is one thing when getting hit in the face, but it's impossible when it comes to shots like this. Once the fighters hit the ground, the punches to the face suck, but he actually screams in pain once the man on top throws a shot at the body again. And I don't blame him. That shot sucks so much. While most people's bucket list consists of things that they'd love to accomplish, a few spots on my list just say, don't piss off Deontay Wilder, which, you know, most people can go their life without making him mad, but if you're as delusional as Charlie Zelenoff, it was only a matter of time before he irritated the wrong person. As we can see here, Wilder absolutely clowns Charlie Zelenoff, who went out of his way to call out and antagonize one of the scariest heavyweight boxers of all time. This was the one that really raised concern. We all knew Charlie was a troll, but this time around, we genuinely thought he needed help, like mental help. He'd need a lot of help to beat Wilder. 
And I'm not sure anyone's willing to give him that kind of help. One thing that you don't learn in a street fight is how to block a head kick. Because, well, let's be honest, how often are you dealing with head kicks in a street fight? There's not a lot of Eds and Barbosas out there trying to scrap after the bars close. The dude here got his hand up to block it, but leg beats hand more often than not. The proper defense involves both arms, but too little too late. You can see he was stunned and probably didn't really know where he was for a bit there. Have you ever been head kicked? Please tell us your experience in the comment section. Okay, so this one is pretty gnarly. The dude in the red gloves throws a Superman punch, ducks under, and follows up with a lead hook. Shades of Carlos Condit, if you ask me. The guy on the bottom isn't new to this, though. He eats some ground and pound, but gets a bit of time to breathe by attacking with an omoplata. His opponent scrambles well and ends up on top once again. The ground and pound is very on point, and really, both of the guys here look decent. It's just that one looks a lot better. Overall, some good scrambling, but the really dope part of the clip is obviously the knockdown. Gonna start picturing myself landing that combination when I'm in the shower, thinking of fights that I could have been in. Okay, so I'm not sure if the target audience for this reference is here, but I was immediately rooting for the guy in the red gloves, because his shorts reminded me of that 1303 album cover. Couple that with him having a very solid lead hook, and that's a fan favorite right there. He really put the O in 303 here. That guy changed the lyrics to, and talk with your fists. I'm gonna stop with the references, because again, I'm not sure if the target demographic is here, but trust me, these references are solid. But yeah, this dude can scrap. Thanks again to Ebra TV for this footage. Again, be sure to give them the credit that they deserve, and give their channel a look, too. So, if someone is wearing UFC merch, they're either really good at fighting, or really bad. I'm not sure there's an in-between for that one. It's like people who actually train, or people that just couldn't find any more Affliction t-shirts. The guy in the UFC Venom shorts here got to show off that he knows how to scramble decently well, but it wasn't because he wanted to, but rather it was because he ate a wheel kick like I eat Thai food, violently. The finish would follow up shortly after though. The guy in the UFC shorts left his arm to be controlled and didn't see this armbar coming. He really had no answer in this fight other than that decent scramble earlier. Great performance for the dude in the plain black shorts. Yeah, yeah. Alors c'est la première fois, uh, uh. The guy in the white gloves looks like a mix of Pitbull, Andre Arlovsky, Ilya Tapuria, and maybe 50 other pro fighters. However, the skills of those guys aren't there. He starts off strong, but after the start, he's a bit stiff and sloppy. His opponent isn't much better, but what we can see here is a slight advantage in the early going for the guy in white. His kicks are enough to offset someone who prides himself on boxing savvy. However, and spoiler alert, the guy in black would go on to win. Still though, it's interesting to see what kicks can do. As a man with skinny arms, I love when guillotine chokes work. In fact, it's one of my go-to moves. So I hate to show how ineffective it can be at times. But in this clip, we got yet another guy jumping for a guillotine and paying the price for it. The taller dude who shot in for the takedown clearly has some grappling experience. And that's not just because he's going against a dude whose main offense on the ground is to spaz out. He passes to the safe side of the choke, waits to see what his opponent does, and then answers via a mean slam and take in the back. Call people with this build scrawny all you want. They're the worst kind of people to have on your back. Those long and skinny arms are evolutionarily made to sneak under chins and get the choke. Now, don't fact check that. Just trust me. This was another banger of a fight, brought to us by Ibra TV on YouTube. C'est un combat de MMA cette fois-ci. Donc un solve de terre, un takedown. That does it for the video. How'd you like the content? Let us know down below. Be sure to like the video and share it. It really does help out the channel. What do you guys want to see next? Let us know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon to make sure you never miss a future upload. Catch you next time.